Hello YouTube, uh, this is knife sharpening Norway. I'm gonna show off some stones, really what I think on three very different steels. I'm gonna show off the Aotoshi Green Brick of Joy 2K stone. It's a very mixed bag this stone. It's, it's a 4K stone in the polish it gives in the feel of nearly everything. But it can give the bite of a 2K in the edge and it can on some steel, some pressure, some slurry cut as fast as a 2K but it's a stone that behaves very differently from steel to steel, pressure to pressure, slurry to slurry, uh, hardness to hardness, it's a finicky stone. I'm also gonna show the King 6K, it's the was what's it the s3 the smallest one version i haven't used this in ages my favorite finishing stone kitayama 4k and my new stone natural stone from ohira no sorry from shusui takeda it's ohira natural medium hard i rate this about 8 to 10 12k if you develop slurry and let that break into finer and finer slurry, it gets finer and finer and finer. I'm gonna show three knives. Cheap, but not bad, but very soft. Victorinox shiny cleaver. That's extremely thin. If the damn uh, camera would focus. They're extremely thin. I've tinned and tinned and tinned. That's very soft. I reckon 56 and it's a pretty gummy stainless. Then a very very hard stainless. Nylox from Patrick Alvig. This is so thin you can't even see the edge. It's edge flexing like hell. In a good way. This is Nylox. I can't remember. I want to say. Was it 63? 64? I can't remember. But something along that lines. This is good stainless. Extremely crisp. The burr easily goes away. It nearly sharpens itself. And I've talked to someone at Lofoten Knife Works. Great guy, great Norwegian site, please buy from him, great knowledgeable guy, he tries his stone, knows his stuff, so as he said he wanted to see the difference between cheap stainless and expensive steel in the etivit. Cheap stainless like Victorinox, it can be a little gummy and hard to deburr, this deburrs itself much easier to sharpen. Same with very good carbon. Uh, yeah, I forgot. This is from Patrick Kalvik. I mentioned him before. A fantastic maker and a fantastic knackeri. I love this. And the good carbon steel in the 5200 from Aaron Johnson. A shiny cleaver. Also insanely thin. It's my son that uh, refuses to go to bed, so he's having a little concert, screaming my name. Can we go in bed? And my fiance is laughing her ass off since he's having a concert. So yeah, extremely thin knives, and these knives sharpen quickly. I'm gonna start from worst, that's the Victorinox, to hardest to sharpen which is the Nylox to easiest to sharpen, which is the 5200. Um, carbon steel, except some rare carbon steels like CDP 189 and such, but normal carbon steels like white steel, uh, that's Shirogami or blue steel Aogami, uh, even now Gamma Super is normally pretty easy to sharpen even at 64-65.
uh, this 52100, this at 62-63, and this like nearly as hard. It ain't as hard, but nearly as hard as I've got my super to sharp. This is already all stones are flat. I'm go just gonna double check with this. Just to rough up the sharpen. No, rough up the surface. And this is soaking a little water. This dressing stone. My Autoshi is completely splash and gone. This was completely dry. Just a little water. And it ain't absorbing anything. I'm gonna tin just a little on all knives and create a burr on all knives on the Otoshi. Just removing the edge that was once and twice and three times the charm. And since this is tin, it's sharp, so I can't use much force, but as you see. I can drag my thumb across it without cutting it. So I normally sharpen this around here, around the five six degrees. So I'm gonna start a little behind the edge now, five six degrees, just polishing out, and I'm using five to six kilos. Actually, a good amount of force to give the stone able to grip it and to release a little slurry. And then it cuts and polishes pretty good. As you see, the slurry releases quite good. If I do the same thing with lighter pressure, it's gonna be the same thing again. I can use very light pressure. Just a little more than the weight of the knife. And let's see what happens. So I went from six, five, six kilos to just the weight of the knife. And now I'm doing the side of the knife, not the edge. To let you see what pressure does. Because when you press in, imagine this is the stone. These are the particles, and when I don't use pressure, I just skate along, these get knocked down, these come. But when I press in, I dig it, and I tear out the abrasive. You see, with little pressure, this is steel. And if I do this long enough, it will actually load the stone, which is also a bad thing. That's what I, I'm saying. Pressure is king on this stone. It isn't an easy stone. But I can show you now how quick you can get a decent polish. This was all scratched up. This is a 2K. It's not, it's not, it's a 4K. That's a mirror polish. In what's that? Two minutes without even trying. Using light, light pressure, this polishes near 6k. You can see the other side, how scratchy and bad that is. And the side I just did. Look near the edge. That's mirror polished. But the downside to that is the stone loads and get glazed. So I tried high pressure, like five, six kilos. Then it releases way too much abrasive. It won't cut at all. It just sheds abrasive because my pressure is too high. So I rip it off. Now it's glazed, so the brace will be as bad as it is. So I'm just gonna refresh it, start again. And I'm gonna try something in between. I'm gonna make it release just a little abrasive, but not as much as it um, 
that it just sheds it. It needs to be able to release it in a good controlled fashion. I'm just gonna talk to my fiance, so now. Vet ikke? No. Our son is not in a sleeping mood today. He don't want to sleep. He wants to stay up and uh, have fun. So again, incredibly nice polish. You see that? <laughs> yeah, he don't want to sleep. So maybe I tried five, six kilos. Go up to a kilo, no, two kilos. Just a firm pressure. And you can see it, it's cutting pretty decent there. And I'm behind the edge now, just pulling it up. And there I found this perfect spot. It's the compound or slurry is more blackish gray. That means it's cut. And this is very much like a natural stone. We need to have a little slurry there. And that is going to make a paste. You can see black slurry. So on this gummy soft stainless, about two kilos of force, medium pressure. It's perfect when thinning, not when doing the edge. Doing the edge you have a lot less surface area contacting the stone. So then you need to use barely any pressure. And since I'm putting a little less, no, sorry, a little more pressure now, you can actually see the polish has declined since the grit actually digs in deeper it's a little more scratchy so i'm moving to the edge now oh sorry doing the back side and doing the same about two three kilos of force if i were guessing medium amount of force and i use mine as a splash and go you can soak it just a tad, but I never find the need for it. Just a few drops. I've used mine quite a bit. And it gets better when you get a little down deeper into the stone. And now it's very sticky, very grabby. It's getting dry. Just adding a few drops. And continuing. Polishing, polishing, polishing. Just removing those tiny shoulders. Thinning it out. Going even thinner. This I'm gonna just start and stop on this stone because there ain't a point to continue another stone on this sheep stainless. It's just wasting the stone and wasting the time. You, do, you don't need a sheep soft stainless to go any higher than tops 2000. It's much better to stop at like 800. You see the, at the edge of the polish has been restored. Now, washing the stone. And again, this is key with this stone. 
fresh abrasive, fresh abrasive. It's a little loading the stone and I want to keep cutting. I'm checking, I just get, get a little corner sticking up. Just making sure so I don't snag anything there. Washing the stone, you don't want any foreign particles. And at 15. I'm gonna set the angle at around 10. I'm using medium pressure, maybe a kilo at the edge. This is around 10 degrees and people are saying that's way too thin or low on my Victorian arc. No it ain't. Because that's where I'm shaping the edge. I'm gonna put a tiny kiriba or micro bevel at around 15 to 18. Get a tiny, tiny burr at the tip area. And when you got angle control, you can use a soft stone like this without being worried about uh, gouging the stone. When you learn to control the angles, if I didn't do that, I would gouge the shit out of the stone. This is a deceptive stone because it's a stone that actually got a, it haven't got the biggest burr, so I'm gonna switch side, maybe I'm bending the edge, since it's so thin too, doing the same thing on this side, around a kilo of force, medium pressure, just pressing gently down to keep it in its place. And it's glazing because as nearly all wet stones, at least mainstream wet stones, are made for carbon lines. Maybe the stone. And here it's hitting the edge. So. There, I'm just gonna switch sides and lightening the pressure just to 300 grams, just the weight of the knife now. I need some fresh abrasive, it's a very loading stone, it glazes over. So, buy if you buy from Lofoten Knife Works or any other side. Buy a rust eraser or just a dressing stone like this. Go over your stone like this. You, you need to make sure it doesn't load. So now I'm racing for around 15. Using barely any pressure. Checking. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got the burr and tire away. I'm sharpening as thin a knife as this, it's actually very hard to tell the burr. Because the burr is so fragile, as soon as you touch it, it's so thin, it just gets pushed away. Um, I'm just gonna finish it and test it on the, some paper. I'm 
I like to go edge into, you get a much cleaner, sharper knife then when you deburr like this. Going just once or twice at a little higher to get rid of it. I also stroke on this. Twenty minutes. Yeah, that's that's stupidly sharp. That's why I say this this stone. This is a eight K edge because I let it load a little and yeah, that's insanely sharp. That's just insane. But that's on a soft, soft gummy stainless. Uh, I have a little here on my half. I uh, haven't got any hair on my arms left, but as you see, it easily shaves. And this is a shiny cleaver, so it needs to be able to push cut. It needs to be able to have a tip. It's, it's stupidly sharp. I mean, it's. If you do the Mary Carter three finger test, that. Yeah, I forgot how scary the edges of the Autoshi is. It's. Yeah, I'm just gonna strop it. Sorry for my leg there. I'm just stropping it on my uh, shorts. Just cleaning up the edge and stropping it just on some cloth like this. Or yeah, gonna remove my ring so I don't hurt the ring. As shown earlier, I've been handling knives since I was 10, I'm now 32. I just showed you how sharp it was, so I can do this without hurting myself. I can stroke like this, I do alternating. I can even uh, do it on my arm. But yeah. A quick tip to check if you got a clean edge, take your nail, just don't do this, don't put weight of them, just want barely to touch the edge and drag, and it wants to stick, so I need to lessen the pressure, if you feel it uniformly sucking into your nail, it's a good edge. If you feel something catching like wants to catch and that isn't uniform on the edge it wants to grab on the entire edge and feels the same good if it feels a little more grabby on some part on the edge a little more polished or less sticky on other parts of the edge you've done something wrong so I'm gonna do the carbon last. I go around through all the stones now. This is a hard knife to sharpen. Very, very, very resistant steel. A good bit more so than Ogami Super. I do three cuts into the stone. I hope you can see that. I'm just gonna strop it. And please don't do this at home and cut yourself open and lay me. I've done this for so many years, I can do it blind. And this is so thin that, yeah, that's three cuts into the stone and still easy magazines 
cutting. That's <laughs> that's good steel for you. So three, four, five, six, and I'm gonna show you so you don't think I'm lying. Can you see there where I'm cutting the stone? Yeah, you can. So I've cut into the stone six times. It's actually a good bit of force, maybe three, four hundred grams. So, yeah, there. <laughs> it's lost its edge at the heel, but yeah, I'm gonna do, it, do it two times more. Oh, so eight times. <laughs> I could still cut food with this. <laughs> Patrick, if you are watching this, yeah, stop making knives that ruin my stones. <laughs> it's just insane. I don't know if the Toshi can handle this um, this uh, steel, but we're gonna find out. Uh, again, this is a S formed grind, which it's so thin, but I'm just gonna see. This I need to use a good bit of pressure, so I'm using about 6 kilos. I'm pressing so I get white knuckles to actually see if it does something on the side of the knife. It actually does, but hellishly slow. This is like 8 to 10k, but it cuts very slow. As you see, but hey, it can do extremely hard steel. Oh, I want a good sink bridge, it doesn't loosen. So, yeah, you need to use a good bit of pressure actually, so you are feeling it in your arms, fingers, and shoulders while sharpening hard steels on this stuff. If I lighten up, it just glides and skips along. Let's check that polish again. And I call this the scratch eraser. I mean, hello. Woo wee! There's my ugly mug. You can see my glasses there. Ah. I need to whiten my teeth. So that's the polish. It's uh, it's insane. And the other side, you see how scratch bad that is compared. I'm gonna do that side too. Again, refresh, 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 refresh. That's the key to this stuff. It transforms the stone into something good. That's, uh, I think, the nano dressing stone. I might be wrong, but if I remember correctly, it's 600 stone. I'm just gonna ask my fiance something. So what? We like to believe he's asleep. And again, you need to use lots of pressure. Don't, of course, I ain't doing the edge and tearing down, but when thinning, you need to use a lot of pressure on hard stainless on the Otoshi. Maybe even more, maybe even 10 kilos. I'm pressing pretty hard. I'm spreading the pressure, so I'm not bending, flexing the knife. It's a Concentrated amount of force. Oh, I'm getting really tired. <laughs> this is beating my the crap out of my fingertips. And this knife, it was just a test knife, so it isn't ground well. It isn't made very well it was just to test out the heat split of the steel just a quick done good knife it cuts like a beast you see how much the 
polished air improved so yeah now doing the heads again i do i don't differentiate a kitchen knife is a kitchen knife even if it's super steel or mild steel i do all my edges with the burr at around 8 to 10 and then i shape the edge into the profile of the blade at around 12 to 15 and i uh, stop with the micro bevel that's blended and i mean blended you can't see where my edges begin or stop because it's shaped into the entire blade so you feel it like this there's no shoulders and i end at about um yeah 15 to 18. so will this do it and i'm sharpening this point too at above about there i want this to be cut of news this into uh, meats and such i think it's cutting but yeah my toshi is actually fairly hard and i've gotten into it i can use some pressure it's actually cutting fairly well oh well i did not expect that i'm using maybe a half a kilo to a kilo force this is nylox very abrasive steel this is the power of the atoshi you can you can create edges you can thin a little you can shape edges and yeah and the weird thing this is this is because the thinness of the knife i got an aver and as i said earlier harder more abrasive resistant steel doesn't mean harder to sharpen quality is quality quality means that uh, how do i explain cheap steels are cheap they are hard to sharpen they are gummy and feels like crap on the stone sorry victorinox but yeah that's the truth it doesn't feel good on the stone they are way too soft I don't like anything under the 60 actually on the stone it's uh, an entire new world when you reach 60 and go beyond just from 60 to 62 is a new world so yeah that's got my bird and as I said I'm sorry Hitching. I'm using uh, yeah, three, four, five hundred kilos of force here because it's such a hard knife. Then when I got in the burr, I'm gonna reduce that and the pressure. I'm gonna back down the angle to smooth out the, um, the shoulders and blend it and blah blah. You have seen that on my other videos. I do this a little, but it isn't visible. a pretty fast cutting stone that's what impresses me and still you get edges that are as sharp as anything if you want one stone that does everything nearly everything it it can't cut the hardest hardest insanest steel out there then you need uh, some really fancy stones but this does 90% of everything out there extremely well, like VG10, Carbon A, Gummy, Super. Don't even think about it, this stone does it extremely well. I got my burr moving behind, and now I'm using just the weight of the knife. Just behind the shoulder, siding up smoothing out the shoulder blending the edge reducing the curve reducing the pressure so i don't crush the edge it's about control 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 
And this stone will teach you that if you do something wrong, trust me, this stone will let you know. It will slap you, ruin your heads and tell you, get your shit together and treat me with respect. And that's a good thing. You don't want the hardest stones to learn to sharpen up. Because if you sharpen like this and plow into the stone, you are doing something wrong. This stone will tell you. A hard, hard stone like a professional Shepard Pro, it won't tell you. It will just let you plow on and do errors. This stone will tell you if you are doing something wrong. And that's a good thing. If you can master sharpening on this, you don't need anything else. <laughs> you need maybe a coarser stone. Like this would be perfect with a very good 3400 stone, maybe 6800. So you can uh, repair uh, scratches, you can repair uh, chips, tin, and then this will remove anything of scratches. You don't need higher than this. Maybe if you got a Janagibia, Takobiki, Usuba, etc. But those are special knives. think we're there and get yourself a strong light source that's also extremely well this is such a thin knife you can't actually feel the worm but when it catches yeah got a little tiniest amount it it's like tinier than here but you can watch it sparkle in the perfect amount of light I'm just gonna remove it because I want these two to be perfect. I want you to see the power of each stone and of course on the other stones which are Kitayama 4k, King 6k and the natural I'm not gonna create a burr. I'm just gonna show you the edges. I'm 99% sure actually the sharpest edges are of this because the edges are I don't know if they have blended grit or what the hell they have done, but it's so sharp. Now, just the tiniest amount of pressure, like you're stroking a atom reactor or something like that, and yeah, barely touching. Going edge into, barely kissing the stone. And you now you are two, three degrees higher than, um, than uh, when you did your layer sharpening to the burr. Just to cut off any burr. This isn't creating a micro bevel. It's too light of pressure. Doing the same thing the other way. And there. This is an insane edge to put it mildly. Mary Carter three finger test. It's a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's. That's. Yeah. I'm speechless what a Toshi can do if we just bother taking the time. This is a view. It's. That's, um, yeah, that's far from a 2k edge, that's a 4 to 6k edge, at least. I'm gonna show you something, some viewers might find it scary, but I'm gonna cut the old pantyhose for my kid. I'm just doing this again. I can actually feel if there's a little burr there, but I can't now, so yeah. If you take a old pantyhose like this, just put it like this and ever so slightly move it and cut to it. So yeah. Barely any force. 
and slides through. So yeah, that's the power of the Autoshi. Just making sure it's clean, so I don't get any um, particles embedded. Do the 4K Utayama. That's supposed in theory to be a finer than Otoshi. It's my favorite stone. I have not or have I? I can't remember if I sharpened the Nakiri with it. This is also supposed to be 99% flat from before. Again, this stupid uh, knot. Konchiro gets some real uh, knobs here, not this. Dinkly winkly ones. I'm doing the same thing, polishing just a little above um, the edge. There, I actually got a little bit stuck there. And feel your stone before putting a knife there. Run your fingers across every part of it because something may get stuck in the stone and it sucks really big time to snow plow an uh, edge that is 90% done into it. We're at 41 minutes. I like long videos. Again, just laying flat and five to six kilos of pressure and as you see, it's loading right away. It's glazing up. So this ain't even, or is it? It's hard to tell. Oh, this is ain't releasing any abrasive. That means uh, the knife, I can't press harder than it. Now I'm at pressing as hard as I can without hurting the knife or being afraid to slip I would I would cut myself so bad it may hurt myself for the rest of my life I can't put any more pressure but it cuts and, uh, you see that's metal so yeah A quick look at the polish Very similar to the Autoshi. Extremely similar. I can't tell the difference. This is supposed to be a 4K stone. 60-70% uh, of the loading goes away with my fingertips. The rest goes away just like that. And this is a weird stone, but I like it. I like weird stones. I like stones with character. Because even though it's so hard and loady, it's still pretty easy to snow plow into. I like stones that demand respect. The edge is already established. So I'm just doing one small cut to take away the uttermost sharpness. Again, just polishing it, and I see immediately that it cuts. And you can actually cut away the apex and uh, slowly creep onto it. And you see, this has cutting power a good bit more than the Autoshi. I don't know if it's different abrasive, different binder, I don't really care. I use my stones. If I like them, I like them. If they cut, they cut. I don't need to know the mambo jumbo. It's fun to know if it's silicone or carbide or aluminium oxide or ceramic or blah blah blah. But if the stone performs, it's... You see how fast cutting this is, and this is on insanely hard to cut still. Trust me, this thing eats belts like, yeah, nobody's business. That's all I'm gonna show you of the stone. Because it polishes like the 
Now of course if 4K, it behaves like the 4K, it's harder, got more cutting power. This is a fantastic finisher stroke. But as I said, this can't do it all. You can get a bird, but it's... I would suggest one stone to rule them all out of she. A two stone setup that would do everything, be perfect. This and the Shackton Pro 1000. So, again, remember I dragged off the edge, so this is a kit I am edge. I call that sharp. That was me. So yeah. Push cutting. Easy easy. Lemon easy. Or what do you say? Just gonna get some more paper. Paper is king in my house. My fiance always tell me what you want with all the paper, but hey. There. So that's that stone. Do the other side, just for fun on the King 6000. I haven't used this in ages, so it smells very funky. I like splash to go stones. I like stones that are just no fuss to use. This wasn't completely flat actually, so you see a little hair and a tiny bit hair, but hey, it takes a second. Get yourself a cleaning stone, uh, a Toma flattening plate or something like that. One thing that differentiates King from all other stones I've tried, except natural, is they smell natural. They smell. Damn good and earthy. So if you want an earthy stone, yeah. Again, using a good amount of pressure, very much. And uh, is it doing anything? Or it's barely cutting. It's cutting, so yeah, fairly decent stone this too. But it's cutting a good bit slower than the Kitayama and the Otoshi, but it's cutting. I'm actually surprised it's cutting this tilt. I'm using a lot amount of pressure. It's actually releasing the fairly normal amount of abrasive too. Not too much, not too little. Oh, I nearly cut myself. Holy hell. I think actually I cut myself. Yeah. The edge is so thin, so actually doing this. I lost my finger, but it's so sharp. Can you see that there? You can so I sliced my finger here. Just nick the skin, but it's so sharp, it closed immediately, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, polish here is rarely, actually, a little less shiny than the Kitayama and the Otoshi, and a little more hazy. Does that tell you anything about how fine the grit are? No, grit are grit. Let's check the edge again. Dragging once across the stone. We're gonna check with the paper now. Just what that does to the edge. As you see, it's cutting, but it's coarse cutting. I drag the edge across the stone, so yeah. Use a 
things are good. So damn, this actually feels good too. It's actually a fairly decent cutting. Wow. I've forgotten how many stones are. Look at that. That's actually pretty damn decent. It's releasing a good bit more as the Kitayama and the Toshi glazed. The Kitayama can do harder steels. This is just right actually. Just about right. Releases the abrasive. As you see, but it's not shedding it. It's releasing it means I actually get a little worse edge of this than the other stone because that abrasive is slamming into my edge. Easily burning and not don't drop too much. It don't do like three, four times one, two, three. Don't drop too much. It gives you a burn and it gives you a weaker edge. And no, I can't back up that scientifically. If anyone says gives me the science, but I've tested my edges for many years and found that it does. So. <clears throat> hmm. That's actually pretty weird. It's actually, uh, I wouldn't say very much, but I can definitely feel that this has more bite. It feels more like a natural stone. Like more tooty, like the edge grabs a little more. So, this would be better for a slicer. I would do this for more push cutting, like the Nakiri is. And I'll toss it for more push cutting, like this is. Put this on a slicer, like a Janagiba, Takodiki, uh, Sujihiki. Things that slices, don't push cut, but slices, you understand, imagine what I'm going to do with the back, like push cutting, this is push cutting, you are chopping onions, mushrooms, a little, but if you go like this, when you cut or like this, this would be perfect. So, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me it can cut fairly decent hard steel. But it tells me different stones, different steels, different edges. But we are getting geeky here. A sharp edge is a sharp edge, but when you have sharpened for many years, you can feel the difference. Yeah, that's one to slice more. It easily push cuts, don't get me wrong, but I can feel it. Yeah. It's a good bit more aggressive. So yeah. That's that's my favorite edge to date. Actually. Hmm. Do I like it more on the Kita than the Kitayama? Yes and no. The Kitayama can do it all on nearly all steels. But this edge is actually better than the Kitayama. So yeah. I love this edge. Very, very, very much. Well, Shosoi Takeda or Hira medium hard. Again, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing this, it's a natural stone, I'm doing this on the 600 stone. Again, dragging off the very edge.
Yeah, that <laughs> that got cutting power. Damn, that dressing stone got cutting power. It, uh, yeah, I be able to see if I get the edge back, or if I'm uh, moving back to the kin again. I don't think, I may be wrong, but I don't think this would be able to do anything to the steel. Again, flattening it, making sure this all this melts nice and it got some ice because I'm gonna check the sides if it does anything with a fairly amount of pressure. It actually does. That's pretty impressive. But it's very slow. And it is just to smooth out the stop, but as you see, that's steel. The fun thing now would be to see, do I like the edge of the king more than this? I actually think I maybe will. We don't need much. We don't need to sharpen for hours and yeah, this is over sharpening so this edge will actually be a little weaker. So that's why I'm dragging it off in between the stones to remove fatigue at all. You see it's a good bit more hazy that finish. So making sure the stone's clean. And just yeah, I know this is where but oh it smells nice. It makes me hungry. We're at the hour. And this is a hard glass you feel. So this is a Kiriba lover. This is the stone to get if you love tight micro bevels. It is it's actually cutting. It's hard to see if I get um, so you can see the stone is Actually not replacing abrasive, but can you see? It's cutting steel. Oh. And the blotting with paper is the worst you can do on your stone. That's actually getting stuck everywhere. So wash your stone. Rub with your fingers hard. Here's actually a stuck bit. There it got loose. Make sure it's clean. Just the tiniest amount of dirt or particle can ruin your edge. And yeah. And I would love if anybody got a really good knife that some my which i can try to get a kosumi on but it needs to be very done from before very flat very nicely done a knife i can train on and i told jiru nakari is to crappy cladding and to crappy the sides of the roads or the blade path the shinogi it isn't high enough quality, so you can do a good Kazumi on it, at least far from it with my skills. I suck at polishing. I like to make good inches, and that's it. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, good, good bit more hazy. That's actually very funny. Got a good bit less bite than the king. Yeah, that's a good bit more polished. So 
I am gonna do something. This is extremely polished now. Very slick. No teeth. This this is basically a straight razor edge. Basically, it isn't, but yeah, hear me out. To get some teeth in, I'm just doing once, twice, once, twice, once, two, three, four, five. And six. Just getting the teeth on. Just getting a tooty tooty. Um, uh, micro bevel on it. Now, a piece of this less resistance. I can't French, so I don't know if it means, but. Something fancy. I'm gonna do the carbon next. Just gonna test. Yeah, that. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. That's that's gonna slice. But it still has the polish, so it easily push cut. You see, even the nose. I have no clue. This haven't got a tip, but it still cuts. Yeah, that's yeah, that's an impressive edge if I got to say so myself. Just cleaning up as we go. Maybe the other knife will take power. I don't know. Uh, what requires play? Uh, well, about set the police. So, yeah, still recording. When I use my stones, I use my knives. They aren't keepsakes, they aren't meant to be pretty, they are meant to be tools. So, just look at that pretty handle. It's olive wood, I can't remember. Aaron, chime in. Is it purple heart? It, was this olive wood? It's, it's beautiful. So, Aaron made this beautiful knife. Isn't as thin as the Patrick Kalvik, but nothing is. But it's damn thin all the way. Beautiful. And again, this is carbon, so I probably need only three times. There. Yeah, it cuts. So, three more times. One, twice, three times a lady. There. Yeah, it cuts, but. Okay. Two more times. And this is what good heat treated the steels does for you. <laughs> so yeah. Oh I yeah, I don't bother dragging it anymore. As I did all my other knives, I'm gonna do a little behind the edge and of course creating the edge. You see now drag one more. There, I've dragged probably 10 times. Again, I'm sharpening very low, thinning very low. 
it's all about performance I'm using two three kilos I'm doing the medium pressure and this is fairly hard 52 100 I reckon 62 63 HRC um, we're loading up like the first knife so i need to up the ante up the pressure going up to five six kilos and that seemed to do the cake do that with all your stones find out where it releases the perfect amount of abrasive where it cuts and feels the best for you not for the person reviewing it but for you because your opinion may be entirely differently from mine i'm not bothering about giving it a perfect sign i'm just showing you look at that edge that's me and the camera that's how quick it <laughs> removes scratches <laughs> i forgot the damn that's a scratch remover look at the other side how damn scratchy that is that was 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 it two minutes was it it's it's hell of amazing so Aaron if you watch this I can recommend you this stone but I don't know if you will like it or if you will get so mad at it that you will throw it in the bin and that goes for all my viewers but trust me if you master this stone you will get rewarded with awesomeness it's like it's like mastering a life skill mastering this stone it took me so long to get good with this stone to get the feeling of it to understand the different pressure to ease up to let it load and get finer and finer and finer and finer polish the tip a little it's a, like a very thin tip I'm gonna show you look at that polish that's a quick and dirty sharpening it I ain't using much time at all again Doing the edge and I'm removing the metal. I don't want metal particles to slam into my edge and ruining my apex. And I have no clue on the best tester. I want one so bad, but it's expensive. The test media is hell of expensive. But if anybody wants to send me one and a heck buttload of test filament, please do. I'm guessing 100, 150 since I like my edges a little more aggressive and toothy and not so much per, per push cutting. So, yeah, going to the edge. I'm fairly aggressive because I know this one, I know when I'm snow plowing. I don't know when I'm not. Two, three hundred grams. I actually think that's it. I'm trying to use life to use utilize 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 the entire stone to not 
waist as much but i always ensure my stones are flat that's a huge important thing i'm pretty sure i'm there already just lightening up the pressure to barely the weight of the knife and then it starts loading up and I'm now pretty high it seems but it ain't because it's blade height is so high so I'm sharper than a cleaver can fool you but I'm guessing this is at 12 maybe now something on the stone again nearly forgot so I was about to begin but then I felt the stone that could have ruined my edge so always have patience always touch your stone always feel it before sharpening even if you have sharpened for 40 years always check into just barely kissing it just getting rid of that damn burr the burr is our enemy if you are extremely talented like cliff stamp and many like him and others you can actually sharpen without creating a burr you can feel i disagree with them that there aren't no burr if you get a high enough powered microscope of course there is a burr so we can argue about that for hours but they are better sharpener than me then you create a stronger edge the burr actually creates a weaker edge than if you haven't sharpened with a burr thus the larger the burr you make the weaker the edge you create because you are flopping a piece of metal across the apex and it breaks off it's like bending a paper clip to each side until it breaks what does that create metal fatigue and a paper clip snaps that's what you are doing with the edge too Just insanely sharp. It's actually a very polished sharp edge. And I, yeah, I screwed up and rounded the tip actually. And that's fun because you see, I, I do mistakes. Me too. I rounded the tip. How do I fix that? You can actually see it if the camera will focus here. Can you see it's slightly rounded? Well, just do like this. And that little do a dub there is probably all it took. Yep, that was all it took. I round often, very often, round the tips of uh, knuckery and cleavers because I like to drag that through the material. I'm now cleaning the stone since I'm through with it. Going to the Kitayama. I'm 
starting with my weak side now and then using a good bit of pressure and then releasing a abrasive and I'm pressing fairly fairly hard you can actually see it on my hand so that's the one thing if I can change with the 4k just release a tad bit like two or three percent more abrasive that's all other than that it's a very good stone it would be fun to see if i love the king 6k more on this too so just a quick and dirty one on that side all the same on this with some abrasive and you see this should be a silicone strip here and there and it should be some rubber or silicone on this damn knobs it's it's impossible to make it stay 100% Just getting some fresh abrasive. There. It's loading up momentarily. So. Actually, I'm supposed to drag off the very edge. Sorry, there. We've done that. Show you polish, which my eye can't see any difference from the Kitayama 4K. No, sorry, from the Otoshi. I can't. Moving to the very edge. Just the weight of the knife. And it feels harder, a little more glassy than the Otoshi. Again, just doing like this. Just getting the tip. I don't need a tip tip, but yeah, it's always good to improve your mistakes. I've been sharpening now for an hour straight, so pretty tired. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good bit more polished than the Autosha, actually. A good bit more polished. I'd like to say the Autosha feels like maybe a 4K on this. This actually feels like a 6K now. Yeah, I can actually run. It's uh, so polished that it sinks into my fingers without giving the tingly sensation. So, yeah. I'm going to the king. And then the natural. And the natural shines of carpet. And I always give my stone so there was something on this so just cleaning 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 clean stones clean edge there again Two three kilos. 
that wasn't enough so I'm going to five six kilos and that's, yeah that's the sweet spot and, uh, yeah it's a good bit more hazy it's like a natural stone finish so I think king stones would be very good I heard uh, 800 is a very good pre stone for getting a kasumi I have no clue I said I've never tried or done it so. there again some fresh abrasive Again, dragging off the edge. What I want to do to keep guys satisfied. And when doing the edge, you can never use high pressure. Maybe tops, and then two strokes now. Maybe tops, two, three hundred grams. I'm just gonna use the weight of the knife. And this too feels pretty hard and glassy actually, but you can feel it and sense it that this is the stone you could actually gouge a good bit quicker than the Kitayama. What was that? I heard a little pinging sound. Just checking that there wasn't a contaminate. Just doing the very edge, just kissing it with light, light strokes. Going edge into one, two. Yeah, no. I'm a red bull Oscar. Three. Just shopping a little higher. There, <sighs> pretty tired. Yeah, I actually like that edge better. Just the perfect amount of polish meets bite. Let's check the tip. Yep. So um, for push cutting. Yep. Again, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. My fiance has come to bed while I'm sharpening and keeping the entire household awake. So I need to be quick. The last stone, the Uihira. And I can see some spotting since I left it wet, which is not good. Oh my natural, they aren't supposed to be wet very long and yeah. just getting the gunk out and from this too. Slightly now. Actually, got maybe a little from the dressing stone. There. I think it got the tiniest inclusion or some spot that wants to grab the foreign particles. 
I need to look the stone here. It's like the tiniest amount that's different from the entire stone, but yeah. again, going behind the edge. The thing is, it's not doing much. It's cutting just as slow as with the Milox. This feels very hard and glassy. Like if you get any burr here, you, it would just go ping ping off the cleaver. I'm doing this just to minimize the burr. Just going sideways. Edge into. Into stopping, 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 and yes, I can stop a little on since it's so far. actually so thin this knife that I can actually bend it just by doing this here at the spine as you see here just putting that on way to dry get rid of this so we got a whole mess to clean up afterwards and then it's yeah, that's, that's perfect. I'm going to refine this with a leather strop. Hey, what's the point? What's the point? It's easily push cutting sharp. I'm just wiping it dry. Yeah, yeah. Fairly good amount of polish there. Not the stupid amount, but yeah. Just making sure. And my dry shorts that it's completely 100% dry because it's uh, not stainless so it will rust just by the tiniest amount of water so what surprised me the most today was actually the king 6 scale kept up with all the other stones. Otoshi is still an awesome overall stone if you learn it. The Kitayama does it all, leaves a fantastic edge. Rohira gives a fantastic edge, but the said on harder steel is it's pretty slow. Naturals are meant to give a Kasumi. Synthetics in my head if you use them right, give a better edge. I, I won't start argument, it's what I mean. What you mean, what others say, let them say it. I got my own uh, opinions. I ain't saying anything wrong, anything right. Some like Arkansas stones, some like India stones, some like Belgian Cuticles, oil stones. 
whatever you use if you use a belt sander if your knives are sharp yeah good for you you don't need anything more than that so that's all <sighs> all stones did good there's no bad stones here if i could choose one of to use as a pure finisher i would use the kitayama i don't know why it it just gives me the good feeling even though it's loading and yeah the all does it all stone now toshi the king actually gives the best edge the most scariest slice edge i would actually highly recommend the king s3 the Hira natural 2 gives a extremely good edge but it's pretty expensive you don't know how long they will last if they crack and such things. So, please like and subscribe and share the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.